yeah, I get that. That makes sense. I suppose you're at the point in your career probably where you don't feel like you you have to sacrifice on your morals maybe or, or do things that you don't think are fully worth it, uh, even if there's money involved, right? Like some people are making millions and millions and millions from NFTs, but yeah. Yeah. If you haven't got the pressure, like you know, I suppose if you're sat there and you can't eat and you've got no, and then someone's like, "Look, dude, you make great art," <laughs> then obviously you're gonna be like, "Okay, fuck it, like I'll stick it on, I'll stick it on, you know, open sea and hope for the best, right?" That makes sense, right? Um, but it, it, if you're not in that situation as a human, then uh, uh, if your if your moral conviction is stronger, your moral conviction is stronger, right? Um, I suppose. Um, that's the way well, I see it. look, I mean, it's not. Well, that said. I think you're you're placing my my you're placing my location my status in my career in relation to my lack of excitement for NFTs. But uh, Bitcoin on its own changed the way I interact with my clients that I worked with and which clients I worked with, uh, which clients I work with today. So that's uh, that's funny because big studios the real big ones, I'm not going to go into names because it gets funny, but the big ones, they approach you with the idea that um, they pay less because they are the big studio, right? That's classic. <laughs> uh, and since I got into Bitcoin, that whole game has stopped. I don't care if you're the big studio. It was one of the, it was one of the teachings in Bitcoin is the value for my time. I don't care if it's the big studio. I'm, I'm going to tell you, like a big studio contacted me like uh, two months ago. We had a call and they told me what was the job. They told was this big brand that all of you know really well. Uh, <laughs> they have amusement parks and ships and things like this. Uh, and <laughs> and they, uh, they started luring me with a whole oh you know it's a four-month contract and, you know the price can you make a prize and i told them literally on a call that look this is literally not the same thing as buying goods from china okay i told them like that i couldn't give a shit if uh <laughs> if the client never comes back I, i'm happy with the clients i have i prefer smaller clients anyways they are more uh they are less ego driven. It's more, it's more a cozy environment. They are more understanding of each uh, individual's needs. Uh, so I said it just like that. And in hindsight, I was like, oh, maybe I lost this client forever. But, uh, but then I was like, well, fuck it. I got Bitcoin anyways. I couldn't give a shit. So it's like, it's, it's, it, right. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, they, they, it's, when they tell you that they want you to lower the price to a ridiculous thing and you know it comes from the fact that they are this big studio and everyone wants to bend over, uh, it, you see through the disrespect. And so I just uh, said it like that. But yeah, I, I don't regret it. It's, 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 it's actually very typical of me to come out like that. So I'm, it, it was good. It's interesting though that like you, you feel like Bitcoin's... Uh giving you that kind of perspective i mean a similar thing here that i noticed like once i got into crypto but then more into bitcoin because I, I got into altcoins first and then once i got into bitcoin more so but just crypto in general i suppose still um i think a similar thing happened to me really and i, and I suppose i never would have actually attributed it to crypto before but maybe it's related to that because it's around that time that i started then valuing my enjoyment of life in general let alone like my work and like finding value in it right like oh am i doing right what am i doing right now okay uh, is that actually make is actually doing anything good for the earth or anyone else in this world or even me like am i happy doing it no right okay well then i'm going to do something else and i suppose um it's interesting to see that that happened for you around the time that you discovered bitcoin more so and i suppose similarly for me as well actually which i find like i sort of i, I never really thought about it that it that it kind of coincides with when i properly discovered Bitcoin that I actually started valuing myself more uh, and making sure that I was just doing the right thing for me. Um, so I don't, I wonder why exactly why that is. And maybe it's kind of like uh, people discovering religion or something in the, uh, in the old days. <laughs> I don't know. Well, look, I don't even, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even try to avoid the whole religion thing, you know, like most of it, I, like I, I, I can't call myself a Bitcoin maximalist. I, well, I can't, it's, I, I, it depends on the definition, but I can't, I'm not like Svetsky. Okay. So it's, it's not, so there's, 
I can't have that dialogue. There's always more things on the table. Matter of fact, I don't hold just Bitcoin as part of my portfolio. Well, I don't hold much more. I hold uh, Bitcoin, a little bit of gold in Tesla because I, I invested early in Tesla. So I'm not going to let go of that one. Um, but so, um, but yeah, Bitcoin did, did, uh, did put a twist on not only my circle, my, the way I interact with my clients, which clients, my appreciation for time. Um, I, I think I've been always very spontaneous and very, um, I'm the guy that wakes up at 6 AM on the weekend. I, uh, I go to bed at nine 30, usually latest 10 PM. So I'm always like very, uh, upbeat. I, every time I wake up, I'm one of those guys like, oh, I can't believe I get to see all this shit again. It's like, what? <laughs> I love this. Let's go. So yeah, in, in Bitcoin kind of put a, put another gear onto that. Right. Uh, Tiago who wants to see the state become dissolved uh, via Bitcoin. What are your thoughts on this guy in El Salvador, uh, Bukele, the president, who has made the legal tender law? Well, th this is not like a, a rule, but a, a percentage of people that get into Bitcoin start falling into the libertarianism rabbit hole, right? It's kind of uh, two things that go somewhat hand in hand. And then you start seeing yourself going into the anarcho-capitalism rabbit hole and you start questioning all these things. I fell for that one too. I'm falling uh, constantly <laughs> in that one. It's a, uh, it's, 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 it's mixed feelings, isn't it? Like you want to see Bitcoin succeed. You want to see people using Bitcoin. Like, you know exactly where I'm going with the answer because you're a Bitcoiner probably. So you kind of see through the bullshit, but it's like, I want to see people adopt it. I want to see people use it. Um, but not when the state tells you to. Um, it's when the people chose it over the currency, right? So it's it's tricky. I it's it's very. I had this conversation so many times. It's very it's very con it's it's very contradictory inside because you know, like if Bukele wasn't to give Bitcoin as, as legal tender, fuck knows how long. <laughs> you know, f fuck knows how many years he actually bridged uh, <laughs> that of natural uh, adoption would natural adoption be the thing yeah yeah of course it would be the thing but um yeah look bitcoin bitcoin is tax free where i come from and i'm not there <laughs> so it's like yeah it's, it's it's a funny situation i think i i think i think obviously i'm i'm so, I'm so happy for bitcoin uh, uh being a legal tender in el salvador i'm probably happier for that happening than i am sad for not having been the people choosing it right and you know like eventually you see eventually th this creeps into uh, bitcoiners' minds that oh it wasn't the people choosing but sooner rather than later you're cheering with the guy you're cheering every time he puts a picture of the McDonald's cap and this and that, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's fucking crazy that he joined the whole <laughs> Bitcoin meme stuff. So yeah, it's, it's mixed feelings. I want to, I'm all about choice and it's, it's a, it's a funny position, but look, they, they have that system where you can actually take USD and not take Bitcoin. I think that was actually a, it feels like to me, like a, a, somewhat a somewhat of a, a safety net of fairness in case you don't want to opt in right it's okay you don't want to opt in you get btc but you continue to use your usd if you want um it still gives people some margin for some some na some natural adoption right eventually people that keep getting paid in usd if they decide they will roll over to bitcoin eventually especially if we know if we go parabolic I guess. So yeah, I have mixed feelings, but I guess I'm happy. I'm happy to see uh, people like Jack Mahler's going out there and doing this stuff. It's super inspiring. It's just super inspiring to see a guy like that just doing work. <laughs> I think it's something that also like, because you mentioned that people can accept Bitcoin, but then have it um, convert into dollars immediately on Chivo and things like that. But also uh, within the law, there's that thing that 
um, you know, basically if, if you don't have, you know, the ability to accept Bitcoin, you don't have to kind of things. So it's like an out for like smaller businesses and local people who either really, really don't want to accept it or can't, which I think is a good thing. Cause as you said, that it provides some more fairness and some more choice to people. Um, but I think the thing is like when I was in El Salvador, like a big part of, um, if, if it's, if there's something weird about it because it's like, okay, I'm in Bitcoin and even just crypto in general, to be honest, uh, being involved in cryptocurrency as a thing has been sort of shunned or dissuaded or sort of, you know, you've always felt like a bit of a weirdo or a degenerate or whatever, right. For being involved in this. Uh, and people are always like, Oh, he's the crypto one or the Bitcoin guy. <laughs> um, it's just like a classic thing, you know? <laughs> um, um, but then like when you're there and as you said, with Naib Bukele, uh, like understanding and getting involved in the memes, like when you're there, you kind of think like, it's this weird feeling like, wow, I feel accepted for the first time ever for actually being into this strange internet currency that you know like everyone thinks i'm absolute nutcase for, for being into so it's kind of this odd thing where it's like finally people who are kind of anti-norm for the first time it seems like actually accept somewhere is like yeah come on in and you're like whoa okay like you know and people i'm sure lots of people in el salvador aren't super happy to to have you know lots of random gringos walking around but like a lot of people like even just random people in the street were like uh it's like some guys driving past in their cars or whatever and they're like honk honk like bitcoin and i'm like oh cool okay like just in the city you know like random guys who, you know um so it's quite like uh you know there does feel like some kind of acceptance which is kind of nice um is, is what were I you that because you were down there right yeah yeah so i went over there in uh oh, when was it i think early really early november from memory i could be completely wrong here it might be might I think be it was uh, the middle of november was it middle of November? Yeah, so went over there um, around the um, Adopting Bitcoin Lightning Summit. And uh, they also had another Bitcoin event there. I can't remember, but... Um, La Bitcoin. More, yeah, La Bitcoin, which was more crypto-y oriented, but the Lightning Summit was just straight up Bitcoin. Um, and so, yeah, went to Bitcoin Beach before the like official Lightning Summit went there um, and saw that and, and, and met Jorge and um, uh, Roman. Um, so it was pretty cool to, to go there. And it's really kind of... I, I'd encourage anyone who feels uh, safe to and wants to, to, he to head over. And as long as they, you know, um, they, they feel like they know enough about the country to, to go over there and do things right and meet people and see the area. Um, uh, bro, I'd like to go with me, it's not so much about, I'm just waiting for the whole Circus 19 to take a break, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, when that takes yeah. a break, I, I, I'm, I mean, I'll take the girls down there for sure. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. really looking forward. Like, you know, I think the, uh, Bukele ha, uh, has an announcement to make like on uh, on Bitcoin conference. Like, I can't imagine what, what's going to come out of that. Further announcement, yeah. Yeah. Think, with the thing with the IMF, I kind of feel like he's the underdog that's like taking on, you know, like the structure of power. So I'm rooting for him. I'm, I, I really don't know too much about El Salvador's politics and politics to me are kind of just corrupt in general. So I don't you know, really put my faith in a leader like that, but he does feel like the underdog and I am rooting for him to be successful. Now I'm just putting it out here right now that he didn't, he did not commit suicide. No, if you try to fuck with the IMF, it'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's like, it's like he, it definitely it's like the john mcafee situation he didn't you know yeah he definitely he didn't Einstein himself like just put it down there he didn't Einstein himself you know and then because shit, shit's about to get weird we're you know, saying the already thing with the imf yeah just put it out there <laughs> it sounds great like when he says like okay with with three btc you you get permanent residency i i think there's a good chance in the future that's going to become even easier. Because, you know, for some of us, 3BTC might sound like a little. Obviously, for the majority of the planet, it's actually a lot. <laughs> I, think, I think that bar is going to be lowered sooner rather than later. <clears throat> well, uh, would that's you, my vibe. I mean, would you see you, uh, and I know this is a pretty tough question, um, but would you ever see yourself, like, if, if this whole Bitcoin volcano city actually ever happens which is a pretty tough i mean it's a tough ask um although it's probably more realistic than was it crypto island or something i saw like this horrible i don't know if you guys have seen this but this is like hilarious <laughs> oh my god like comedic uh oh with like connie the coin and like this creepy stuff going on um but anyway uh besides that if, if they actually managed to make it take off and happen like would you see yourself uh considering ever going there like uh, to join 100 fucking percent 
yeah. yeah i was just yeah i was literally talking with my wife we, we were like yeah look like i <laughs> she was raised in sweden uh, sorry in switzerland she she'd been to portugal now she's in london i've been uh in portugal been to london been to portugal again and we were just discussing like it, it literally doesn't feel like this is where it's it ends well obviously you don't know if it's el salvador it's it feels like a, a long shot like what we, we <laughs> like i always thought like this is not the end of our movement but El Salvador, <laughs> like, but you know, like <laughs> you start you start building these ideas in in your mind, which is really how how I work. I build an idea, and it's just depending on who you are, it only takes a certain percentage of the idea for it to become something that you need to do. And I act really early when it comes to this stuff, like. It's such a crazy idea. Like I look at that little three D mock up they made. They made of the city, and I'm like, "What the fuck, bro?" <laughs> it's like I can't imagine this like circle thing full of bitcoiners in there and shit. It's so crazy. Zero taxes and shit. What? Oh, it does sound good, man. And I, and I think like it's 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 only human nature to want to be somewhere. A where you feel like you actually belong is first off like people don't want to be somewhere they don't belong right like that's why when you see at school there's always the few kids who just feel like they don't belong there and they end up unhappy and blah blah, blah. um and obviously then secondly as well like again it's human nature that okay if for example i mean your work's mainly online based or pretty much wholly online based um so like if you if you if you're someone who could do that why wouldn't you go live somewhere where you're not going to get taxed and you earn in like a sort of, uh, you're not going to earn like a what a local El Salvadorian would earn, um, which is a sad thing, but is, is the honest truth. Uh, why would you not go somewhere where your money will go further? You're not going to get taxed. You feel like you belong. It just kind of seems like a common sense move if it ever actually happens. Um, Cause I think a lot of people. Yeah, I guess. That. Yeah. Usually the, the anchor to that is family ties, isn't it? Like both me and my wife, we have like a, uh, parents in Portugal that are getting older and the idea that you're going to be like fuck knows how many hours El Salvador is from Portugal and you're not like proactive in their life in case they need that's that's a yeah that's a crazy yeah that's a weird anchor to to have also my daughter she's two and a half years old uh th there's a point where you have to make the move or then it's too late and or you have, you got to wait for her to grow to make it after so cuz you don't want to disrupt her life too much at the beginning so, yeah it's the the family ties is usually what uh, what makes everything a little funny but yeah look uh first let's see if they can make even one building up from that city one building if they make one building I, my hopes <laughs> my hopes uh, go up <laughs> i just wanted to ask like what what project in bitcoin is like the most exciting for you right now that's a funny one i wouldn't be able to tell actually i'm more driven by the people than the projects themselves it's really the people that drive me even like look throughout the years i've reached out to all these bitcoiners that uh could have just my message my message probably went to the spam box not even the main inbox on twitter and they've always replied to me and put their time to help me. Like, uh, Gigi, when I, when I opened my, when I got my note for the first time, there was no Umbrel. <laughs> Umbrel is like a, 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 an iOS on, on the node. But when I got my node, it was like all this DOS type operating system. And I fucked, I fucked it up at some point and I wrote Gigi. I'm like, well, I just read 21 lessons. I'm pretty sure Gigi knows how to help me with this shit, even though he doesn't know me. I wrote him. He helped me out with that stuff. Uh, other people like uh, Gre uh, Foss, Greg Foss helped me with some insights personally. Uh, Nick Carter, I reached out. He, he pointed me in the right direction when I had some questions. Obviously, Breedlove, when I reached out to Breedlove, he was like, well, let's, let's do this video. Uh, Mac, uh, Max Hillebrand opened my mind to some stuff as well. We, we talk a little bit about libertarianism and things like this. So it's just the idea that I reach out to these guys that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no one they know. I don't even have my real picture on Twitter. I have my, when I'm young, when I'm a, like a, 
16 year old or something and they they're open to help me out and discuss these things that's it's bitcoiners that, that really i'm bullish on bitcoiners that's the quote right <laughs> that's the thing 